After Nirvana released Smells Like Teen Spirit in September of 1991, everything would change. The band's biggest hit would become the anthem for a generation, catapulting grunge into the mainstream and earning its place as one of the greatest songs of all time. Now, 30 years since the track's release, Teen Spirit remains one of the most streamed songs of the 90s, passing 1 billion plays on YouTube and Spotify. But if you've ever tried to understand the single's lyrics, you'll find them fairly difficult to decipher. Let's explore the track's off-the-wall origins and discover the true meaning behind Smells Like Teen Spirit. While at a grocery store in Olympia, Washington, members of the Riot Girl band Bikini Kill, Kathleen Hanna, and Kurt Cobain's then-girlfriend Toby Vale had a laugh over a deodorant brand named Teen Spirit, jokingly wondering what a teen spirit might have actually smelled like. Some stories also say that Toby Vale may have also used Teen Spirit herself. Either way, following a night of drinking at Kurt's apartment, Kathleen grabbed a sharpie and wrote, Kurt smells like teen spirit, on the wall after he had fallen asleep. When Kurt awoke, he saw the phrase and liked the sound of it. Since they'd been up the night before discussing anarchism and punk rock, Cobain interpreted the expression as having a revolutionary meaning. He thought Kathleen was complimenting him on his rebellious spirit and as someone who could inspire the youth. When Kurt and Vale broke up later that year, Kurt started channeling his frustrations into new tracks, including one that would become the band's breakout hit, Smells Like Teen Spirit. The single was his attempt at writing the ultimate pop song, while also ripping off the Pixies, a band he greatly admired. He would borrow their contrasting use of slower, quieter segments that were quickly followed up by explosive, louder moments. Kurt thought the four chord riff sounded cliched, reminding him of Boston's More Than a Feeling. Or the Kingsman's Louie Louie. Personally, I think Nirvana's tune sounded more like Blue Oyster Cult's Godzilla than anything else. With the main riff and vocal melody in hand, Cobain presented the track to the band. When bassist Chris Novoselic called it ridiculous, Kurt made the band play the riff on repeat for over an hour. Novoselic would eventually begin playing the riff at a slower pace, which inspired Dave Grohl to craft the track's drum beat. Something pulled straight out of disco. Building the track was truly a group effort, and it would be the only song on Nevermind to credit all three band members as writers. At first, Cobain supposedly wanted to call the track Anthem, but would recall what Kathleen Hanna had wrote on his bedroom wall six months earlier. He quickly called up Kathleen to tell her that he wanted to use Smells Like Teen Spirit for a song. He would only learn about the deodorant brand months after the track's release. Nonsensical and sung in Cobain's slurred, guttural voice, Nevermind's original packaging also failed to include a full transcription of the track's lyrics. It became another reason why radio stations were initially reluctant to play the track. They had no idea what the song was about. From its first few lines, Teen Spirit was widely interpreted as a teen revolution anthem, an interpretation reinforced by the track's music video, which features a high school pep rally ending in chaos and riot. Cobain generally acknowledged that it was meant to be a call to arms. At the time of Nevermind's release, Kurt explained that the song was about his friends, saying, We still feel as if we're teenagers because we don't follow the guidelines of what's expected of us to be adults. It also has kind of a teen revolutionary theme. Kurt was feeling disgusted with his generation's uncaring attitude and with his own apathy and spinelessness. This revolutionary idea was more of Cobain pleading to the kids to wake up. But as Kurt did more interviews, he would alter and exaggerate the story each time, rarely giving specifics about its true meaning or making up a new answer on the spot every time. In the biography Come As You Are, The Story of Nirvana, Cobain said the entire song is made up of contradictory ideas. It's just making fun of the thought of having a revolution. But it's a nice thought. The track also seems to make reference to Cobain's relationship with ex-girlfriend Toby Vale, who was often regarded as a strong, independent woman who refused to play the typical girlfriend role. 
the line, here we are now, entertain us, came from something Kurt used to say every time he would walk into a party to break the ice. After arriving, he'd say, well, here we are, entertain us. You invited us here. His stupid and contagious line sounds more like a comment on humanity's ignorance and its tendency to spread that stupidity like a disease. The latter half of the chorus plays with opposing ideas. A mulatto is the outdated term for a person of mixed European African ancestry, essentially an offensive term for someone who is biracial and typically darker in complexion. The opposite would be an albino, someone with a genetic condition that causes skin, hair, or eyes to have little or no color. These two terms could be Kurt reflecting on groups of people that may feel left out in society, outcasts like himself. Another take could be that he's speaking about the old-fashioned cocktails of the same name. Beverages that could be amplifying his libido. The second verse seems to have Kurt reflecting on his craft. How what he does best in life is seemingly done better by other artists. But exclaiming that he still feels blessed to have a gift for songwriting to begin with. The third verse potentially alludes to Kurt's drug use, as having a taste is typically associated with getting high. The latter lines are just simple and nihilistic, as if Kurt wanted to tell us more, but decided to keep it to himself. The majority of the song's lyrics can and should be left up to interpretation. Chris Novoselic added that Kurt really despised the mainstream. That's what Smells Like Teen Spirit was all about the mass mentality of conformity. Dave Grohl, on the other hand, has stated that he doesn't believe the song has any message whatsoever, that he'd seen Kurt write lyrics to tracks just minutes before singing them, watching him trying to simply fill up spaces with syllables and words that rhyme. I think many would feel that after reading the correct lyrics for Smells Like Teen Spirit, what you initially imagined Kurt to be singing was likely better than what he actually sang. And knowing the track's true lyricism won't provide you with any more context on its true meaning either. Nevermind's co-producer Butch Vig thought Kurt's ambiguity was the point. Even though we may not know what Kurt was truly singing about, there was something in there that was understood. A feeling of frustration and alienation. And that's what cut to the heart of a generation of kids. Nirvana, nor their label, ever expected Teen Spirit to take off as it did. Teen Spirit deodorant even saw a massive surge in sales following the single's success despite not even being mentioned in its lyrics. But over time, the band grew uncomfortable with the amount of attention the track brought them. During concerts, they would intentionally play it poorly, eventually excluding it from their set lists altogether. Cobain said it was almost an embarrassment to play, feeling as though the single was attracting the kind of fans he would have hated in high school. The abrasive in utero would be a conscious attempt to shed the audience they picked up with Nevermind, a goal that was only partially fulfilled. But that's a story for another time. Teen Spirit was the first alternative song to become a huge hit, and in many ways it redefined the term. Alternative would no longer imply a lack of popularity. Nirvana had popularized alternative and indie rock, unintentionally bringing the genre into the mainstream like no other band before, and arguably since. Baby boomers may not have been able to relate to or even like Gen X culture, but after Teen Spirit, they could no longer ignore its existence. It smells like Teen Spirit became the anthem of a generation, giving the apathetic kids of Gen X a voice and validating their feelings through commercial acceptance. Kurt Cobain and his little group had truly captured the teen spirit. Nirvana rocked the world in 1991 with Nevermind, but their debut record arrived in 1989, arguably one of the monumental turning points in history. The Pixies, The Cure, and The Beastie Boys all released seminal albums, but it was also the year the world was introduced to the Game Boy, the year the Berlin Wall fell, when Baywatch would take over television screens, and when San Francisco Bay experienced a magnitude 6.9 earthquake. 1989 was truly the year that rocked the world. There's a full documentary about the year's epic events at curiositystream.com forward slash middle eight. And Curiosity Stream's library has recently expanded with thousands of new titles. You've got Shut Up and Play the Hits that documents LCD Sound System's Madison Square Garden performance. Nick Offerman from Parks and Rec has a series about the history of our homes. And of course, there's stuff like David Attenborough's Light on Earth that's just fascinating eye candy. 
If you sign up with the link below, you'll get a full year of Curiosity Stream for 15 bucks. Plus, you'll also get access to Nebula. That's the independent streaming service that me and a bunch of other creators are currently creating exclusive content for. If you want to give the two platforms a try, head over to curiositystream.com forward slash middle eight. Don't miss out on some great documentaries and exclusive content from the internet's best creators. If you like the video, show it some love with a like rating. Subscribe and hit the bell if you want to see new videos when they go live. Support us on Patreon if you want your name in the credits and early access to videos. And finally, if you're in the market for some new music, my podcast Playmate has me chatting with some of the year's best artists and talking about the music they love. It's all in the box below. Thanks for watching and keep listening to Nirvana.